Judy, we are live. Senator Boner. Senator Case. Present. Senator Nethercott. Here. Senator Scott. Here. And Chairman Driscoll. Here. We, have a quorum. we are on, back on House Bill 198, University Water System. Uh, we left off, I believe we had a, a city in front of us and they didn't quite get finished. If we have city representative, um, Welcome back. Uh, forewarning for people in the audience, other than the direct people involved, we're going to probably go to two minutes testimony when we start going out to individuals just because of time issues. Proceed. Thank you. All right. Mike on. Um, thank you again, and I appreciate the opportunity to complete um, our discussion. I would uh, remind you, I do believe we have. Mayor Weaver by video, and he's signed up to testify. Um, so I'll just conclude my comments. Um, I've re Excuse me, we'll get him in on the video and also have you reintroduce yourself. To Absolutely, the thank, thank you. you. Um, I'm Janine Jordan, I'm the city manager in Laramie. Um, so this morning I shared with the committee um, the four options that the city had proposed to the university beginning in 2015 through I believe 2018, 18 and a half. Um, to provide free irrigation water to Jacoby Golf Course, um, and it would be untreated or what we would call raw water. Um, those four options remain unanswered um, to this day. And so we were a little surprised when 18 to 20 months ago, we saw drilling apparatus being installed and two wells being drilled within 70 feet of the well that the city owns and had planned to um, put into production and had offered to the university to cost share on and to uh, use to our mutual benefit. Um, in any case, the drilling of the University of Wyoming A and B wells uh, did provide opportunity for some additional solutions to be brainstormed and presented to the university. And so the city provided uh, two additional options um, in 2020 last year that would allow for collaborative use perhaps of the city's uh, wells and the two new wells that the university um, drilled and I, I won't go into the detail on those because it is complex but um, understanding that the city's goal was to provide irrigation um, for free at every turn um, as long as maybe the university would invest in those initial capital expenses with us so that our ratepayers would not bear them. Um, those two uh, new solutions that have been presented also remain unanswered by the university. Apparently the answer is what we're doing here today. Um, the last thing I'll say is um, there's been concern about the ordinance the city passed. We have Corey Lewis with us today. She's our water attorney. Um, she can speak to the ordinance itself and legalities pertaining to it. Um, but it has been the city council's understanding and position that the university need only come, apply for the permit. Uh, we, in fact, in this correspondence that I provided to you from November 5th, the city offered a variance to the ordinance um, and indicated our intent to uh, review any application that they brought forward. The university has said in writing that they will not even uh, apply for a permit to import their water into our municipal service area for our water system. Um, so to date, they've not even applied um, and, and given the city council any opportunity to act um, under the ordinance. Um, the last thing I'll say before I turn it over to Corey is we provided a fact sheet to you all, um, along with a resolution adopted unanimously by all nine of Laramie City Council's elected officials. Uh, a couple points on the abbreviated fact sheet that I wanted to share with you. Um, we talk a lot about these wells being in the Casper Aquifer and it being a class one potable aquifer, and that is true. Um, so the water that we draw from it, as well as the water that the university will draw for irrigation is in fact drinkable water. Um, there's a fallacy that's been circulated that is that the city somehow treats that Casper Aquifer water. We do not. Um, we basically send it, in the uh, send it down the line after very light chlorination and fluorite treatment at the wellhead, but it never actually goes out to our treatment plant and is treated uh, the way that our surface water from the Laramie River is treated. Um, I also wanted to note that 
we've talked a lot about interference and our concerns about interference with our wells go back well beyond uh, this immediate issue that began in 2015. Uh, we had been on record with the state engineer's office going back as far as 2006, uh, noting that our wells do not fully penetrate the aquifer and that wells drilled in the vicinity of Joey, Jacoby Golf Course uh, would create this cone of depression. You can Google it. <laughs> um, hyd hydrogeologists talk about it all the time, but we have testing data that shows that our own 41 T3 well, 70 feet from two new high production, deeper wells drilled by the university, when pumped many, many decades ago lightly, it drew down our primary production well a half mile away at City Springs, which is the reason we had to be very thoughtful about putting this well into production within our system. If we own both wells, we can manage the interference so as to not have to drill deeper City Springs. But when we don't own those wells, uh, we're likely looking at probably a million dollar expense to fully penetrate the aquifer because we are now finding ourselves in the position of a race to the bottom, literally. Um, and the taxpayers of Laramie will be funding the race to the bottom on our side. State will be funding it on the other side. Um, last thing I'll say, and then I'll let Corey uh, jump in here. Um, it's been discussed that it was somehow disingenuous for us to indicate the state engineer's office approved the well permits as a matter of course. And I just wanna share with you that we took that language verbatim off of the letter from Greg Lanning, the state engineer who approved the well permits for the University of Wyoming in his own words, as a matter of course, under state law. Um, with that, I'd answer any questions and I'd be happy to let Corey Lewis address other issues with respect to constitutionality or whatnot. I've got a couple and I'm gonna to go to Senator Scott. But I'm, I'm gonna start with a couple of mine is on interference, and that's, I sit on select water, and we do this all the time. See a county commissioner sitting in the corner that their county drilled numbers of wells that potentially affect one of my personal wells. And state law is really clear. Interference comes when it actually happens. And I don't think there's any role of the city to play in that. that we're, we're really well lawed up on our water law with the state engineer's office. And I think at least from my end, uh, it's pretty clear that if they grant a permit to drill a well, they grant the permit and the water can be produced. My second one is, is I guess I'm trying to understand why you're really bothered if you've made offers to provide the water to them for free. And now, regardless of what the four, five, six offers have been, that they're going to produce their own water and pump it at their own cost and do it as long as their wells aren't interfering with yours, what difference should it matter to you? Free water is free water. And basically it appears they wanna have their own, own water supply and not be held hostage. Why should it matter to you unless their wells interfere? And I can assure you if they do, the state engineer will intervene. If it costs you a million dollars, it costs you a million dollars, but they, they will intervene. So what are your thoughts on that? Why? Why should it matter at this point? Um, I appreciate the question. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, with respect to why we care, um, we've, if you look back historically at all the documentation, which we've made available on the website, going clear back to 2015, uh, our concern has always been with interference with our primary well at City Springs. And secondarily, with our plans for the 41T3 well, which we need to facilitate growth in our community on the north side of town, this ties to a $10 million uh, storage project that is being funded by the State Water Development Commission on the north side of town. So our concern's always been why we care is interference. Let me assure you, what we reap in revenue from Jacoby Golf Course is not $200,000. The highest it's been is like 180 over the last 13 years. Um, it ranges anywhere between, um, let's see, I, I wanna talk about one thing, rates. We aren't charging them more. Jacoby Golf Course has had the exact same charges for the last three years. We but got it, can, can, can you answer the question? We, I, we understand. Right, right. I just want you to know, this isn't, this isn't an issue of money. Um, it's less than 1% of our total $6 million revenue. It's interference. And while I agree with you, we've been counseled by our wonderful attorney here, that interference, interference comes post hoc. In the city of Laramie, we had to make huge rate increases in 11 and 12 of this uh, century. I've seen that. <laughs> um, the reason being decades of underfunding and a collapsing system, literally. So we finally have our system in a robust place, but frankly, our ratepayers can't take more rate increases. So what we'd ask the state is to do better 
do better. Don't wait until the harm is caused to a public water system that supplies not only the city of Laramie, but most of the rural residents living in Albany County as well. We said we can do better with taxpayer money. We want you to fund an interference study first before you permit the wells. And then if there's interference, let's figure out how to mutually solve it and not put it on the backs of our ratepayers. So that's why we care because we wanted to do better because we can't put it on our rate. Thank payers. you. I, I understand that. I understand the interference. It's just, uh, how many gallons a minute are you permitted on your 70 well that's been dormant for however? I, I, I honestly don't know that uh, number. A lot. <laughs> are, are you gonna, gonna try to stop any permits into the Casper Aquifer then? Because that's my next question. It's a big aquifer and really what you're doing, it's, you know, our priority system works really well, deals with interference and you're gonna have more wells come. So are you gonna go after whoever does next on the wells? Because for me, it's, there's two separate issues here. And, the interference one is clear. We hear it all the time, uh, and it's the same process through the state engineer's office. We've got great state law that deals with it. Believe me, you'll be taken care of if you can prove interference. I appreciate that. And we have been on record to say if interference just cause, uh, we've been on record with Water Development Commission on the first wells, and now with state engineer's office, that we expect the state of Wyoming to fund the corrective action to mitigate the interference so it's not borne by the ratepayers of Laramie. So we have made that request repeatedly, trying to be preemptive and to do better with the taxpayers' money. And in this case, not even tax money, ratepayers' money. So basically 32,000 shareholders that own the water system. Thank you. I'm going to go Senator Scott. I'll make a quick statement. State of Wyoming owns the water. And I, I get your protection of the ratepayers. Yeah. But the water's property of the state, and there's a, actually our constitution says. I, you're correct. And I, if they I, will do what they can to get water yes. produced developed and permitted to the best of their ability. So constitutionally, state engineer's office is obligated yes. to try to help develop that water. So for that end, that, that's a statement, not a question, but it, it's really clear to me. Senator Scott. Chairman, I, I didn't say we own the water. I said the rate payers, the 32,000 people own the water system that delivers the water. So I'm sorry if that came across incorrectly. Senator Scott. Mr. Chairman, what is the priority date on wells and what is the priority date on your wells? I'll let Corey answer that if that's okay, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Senator Scott, the priority date on the T1, 41 T3 well, excuse me. Now, could you introduce yourself, please? I oh, so that. sorry. My name is Corey Lewis. I'm a water lawyer. I'm also a proud graduate of the University of Wyoming College of Law, <laughs> um, but I represent the city of Laramie with its water issues. And so I, if you don't mind, I was going to jump in here and help with answer this question. Perfect. Okay. The, the priority date on the university's new wells is 2019. They, they were drilled towards the end of 2019. The priority date on the city's well, the 41 T3 well that Janine was mentioning, is in the 1950s. I believe it was 1954. I have that with me in my bag if you want the exact date. Mr. Chairman. The, what counts is the relative date. And I can tell you from experience that there were wells drilled in our creek that interfered with senior water rights. And the state engineer flatly regulated them off when the regulation was called for. So I think you're probably in pretty good position under existing state law. Uh, and I, Mr. Chairman, I don't see that this bill overrides existing state law, basically, and I think it can't because uh, the Article 8, Section 3 of the Wyoming Constitution on priority of appropriation would govern and prevent us from doing that. Thanks, Senator Scott. Mr. Chair, thank you. And, and Senator Scott, I just wanted to explain what Janine was saying is the rate payers in Laramie will have to spend a ton of money to go and redrill our prior senior well we have to drill it deeper to have a better interference claim. So we have to go spend a ton of money to go redrill our older well because of these new wells. And that's not fair to ratepayers who are within our jurisdiction. I'll go ahead and answer some. That's the way our law works. I feel really sorry for you, but that's the exact place I'm at with my well is my well is a 1300 foot and I'm gonna use it and it's not you, I get it but the city of Gillette has wells that draw on the same aquifer I'm in. 
my pump's 30 feet from the surface. And my question to the state engineer was when I have to move my pump to 1300 feet deep, is that interference? And they said, it is clear. And that's, you're gonna deal with the same law. It's clear that you're gonna move to the bottom of the aquifer. And if you run out of water, you have a problem, but you'll move. And I feel sorry for you, but they rule this way every day on water rights. I'll let you answer. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, so this bill gives the University of Wyoming a, the right to bypass one city ordinance. The city ordinance is only within the jurisdiction of the city limits. We're not saying that they can't use that water on its ranch or anywhere else, but in the city limits where we deal with the runoff, if a water line breaks, if there's a flooding event, if there's any runoff from the golf course, any of the landscapes within the city, that goes into the city's drainage system. The city ratepayers, the city residents pay for the operation and upkeep of that drainage system. Just last session, the legislature redefined or clarified the municipal authority to regulate drainage systems. So on a ranch situation, I grew up on a ranch. On a farmer ranch, you have your water, you deal with the runoff. On a, in the city, you're, you're hitting other people, right? So we're not affecting how they use their water outside our limits. We are saying in, in the limits, the city council, I, I advised them that they had a fiduciary duty to protect not only their water system, but also their water supply. They, they have to protect the physical, fiscal integrity of both. And that's where we're kind of getting to on the, the, the fairness argument. Also, it seems like um, we keep going back to Title 41. That's my wheelhouse, I'm a water lawyer. I love this discussion, okay? I also represent a water and sewer district. Guess what? The rules and regulations all say that nobody has private wells. The whole purpose for a water and sewer district is to provide the water to people in the district, okay? In a city, in a city one of our municipal functions is to provide water to the residents. The city, and I've advised the city to not go so far to say nobody can have wells because I've, we feel like that's extreme. We have only said that if your well is gonna impact our wells, then don't use it within our limits. Go use it somewhere else and we'll deal with it under Title 41 under an interference study. Does that help? Senator Case. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm, I'm kind of interested in this, this way too. So, so the well that's uh, being interfered with, is that being used now? Has, what is the history of use of that well? Uh, Mr. Chairman, Senator Case, uh, we have not been using the well. It has been in, it's been a part of the city's um, plans for I, I think almost a decade now to, to activate it because of the growth on the north side of the city. They were always holding on to it because they knew at some point that part of the city would grow. And now, now we're here and now we need to use it. And now there's another well less than hundred feet from ours, from the very well that we need. Am I getting off course? May I follow up? You can, so, I'll follow up for you if you, if you don't hit the question. When was the well last used? 41T3 or the city springs wells. The one, the one that's gonna be interfered with or both of them or whatever. Mm -hmm. the, the city springs, sorry, Mr. Chairman, Senator Case, this, the city springs wells are, are used every year. The 41T3 well has not been used. It is going into use now. When, it, when was it last? Year? I don't know. It's been, it was permitted in the fifties. So I would, I, I can't, I'm sorry. I don't know the answer to that question. And Mr. Chairman, is that the well that's within 70 feet of the other well? Yes. So Mr. Chairman, if is there, there must be, is there an abandonment issue here? I, 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 Five years, there definitely is an abandonment. Okay. So let's, there's that issue. Uh, and then the ordinance that's within the city about private wells, how does that work? What, what are you saying? Because um, there are a lot of municipalities in Wyoming that have wells that people use. Sure. And uh, so what does the ordinance say? I heard you say that it doesn't prevent you from having a well, but it sort of says if your well interferes, then you can't use it. Is that what it says? Proceed. Okay, Mr. Chairman, Senator Case, I have the ordinance right here. I'm happy to hand it to you. All right, it's, just it's, tell me what it says and yep. please hand it to me too. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> yeah. It says that if you, that all existing wells within the city limits are grandfathered in, as long as they were legally permitted before June 1st of 2020. 
So if, if they have already been used and they're already in, in, in use, then we're not, we're not saying you can't use them. Go ahead and use them. All we're saying is let us know where you're using them because we deal with the runoff in our drainage system. And then the other part of the ordinance is if you want to drill a new well, if you wanna bring non-municipal water into the city limits, then you have to get a permit from city council. And Mr. Chairman, that would be for irrigation, right? I, nobody's gonna drill a well and use it for domestic, I would suspect. So if I wanna drill a well, I live in Laramie, I wanna drill a well and use it to water my lawn rather than buy city water to water my lawn, do I have to get a permit from the city? Mr. Chairman, Senator Case, that's correct. You have to apply and then go in front of the city council for that permit. And I can tell you that the city's policy is, is, is if it's not in the Casper aquifer, if it's not gonna infect our water supply, then they're gonna grant you that permit. Mr. Chairman, when did you become the state engineer's office? Uh -huh. I'm happy. May I, yeah, <laughs> Mr. Chairman, that. Senator Case, we, we're not intending to be the state engineer's office. What I'm trying to tell you is the state engineer's jurisdiction is not impacted. The state engineer, if you could call anybody in the groundwater di division, call George Mosier. He will tell you that the state engineer's jurisdiction ends at the wellhead and the, it'll say the beneficial, on the permit, it says the beneficial use of the water and it says what you, what you cannot do with well. It gives you what the, the certain beneficial uses of the water and it says which area you can use that water. But it doesn't say you must use that water. Okay, I can actually go get a, a well permit on your land. Does that mean that the state engineer says that I have the right to get water from your land? No, the state engineer does not trump all other laws. If, if by that theory, then the DEQ regulations are interfering with the state engineer my water and sewer districts regulations that say nobody can have a private well within their jurisdiction would interfere with the state engineer. There are many reasons why once the water is out on the surface, the other laws apply after you leave the wellhead. Mr. Chairman, I'm just having a little trouble finding this external impact on the surface. If I have a well, I turn it on to water my lawn. I'm not flooding other people. If I was flooding other people, I'd be pretty stupid to let my, my water pile up. I'd be wasting a lot of money. Most people that have a well, they would just turn on, water what they want. There's not an excess externality. If that's the basis of, of the city's claim to be able to regulate that well, isn't that it? Mr. Chairman, Senator Case. No, the, the reasons that the city has this ordinance, actually there's multiple. And again, I'm happy to hand you the ordinance and I'm happy to walk through all of it. But one of them is to protect the fiscal integrity of their utility. If everybody goes off the system, especially big water users, the rates go up substantially because those that are still on the system are having to pay way more because everybody's leaving the system. Just like a water and sewer district. That's why they're monopoly. Is that right, Mr. Chairman? You get to be a monopoly and you get to tell people what they can do? That, uh, Mr. Chairman, Senator Case, that's the municipal, that's a, providing their municipal function. That is one of their constitutional functions under Article 3, Section 37 of the Wyoming Constitution. Municipalities have certain functions. And I would love to have a long conversation with every one of you, everyone that wants to talk about Title 41, anyone who wants to talk about water, I'm there. Okay, there are many, many reasons for this ordinance, and it's for me, it was the water supply. If you're going to drill a new well, if, people, if everybody starts drilling new wells right next to the city's wells in the Casper Aquifer and use that water, this is important, use that water within the city, then the city had not just the duty, but the, I guess I would say this the other way, the city would be negligent to not pass an ordinance that says, please come to talk to us first so that we can work out an arrangement. Because I'm telling you, my client wants to work with the university. They've been together for over a century. These two parties can work this out. We're just asking them to come to the table. That's all. Thank you, been hearing this for about six years now. Go ahead, Senator Nethercott. Ms. Lewis, I would like to thank you for your clear presentation, your understanding of the law and your recitation of why the ordinance was put into place. Thank you. 
You've done a remarkable job. And I won't debate you on the quality of your Juris Doctorate. So thank you very much. Mr. Chairman, Senator Nethercott, thank you. Further questions? Further questions? Thank you. You did do an excellent job, by the way. I'm not sure where I'd eye, but I'd, I get it. Um, so who do we have next? Uh, go ahead if you uh, need to say something more. So sorry, Mr. Chairman. No, you're welcome. I kind of handled all of mine with questions and I never got to present my testimony, which I won't do. I am respectful of your time. I just want to add one more thing that I was thinking about last night. And that is Wyoming is the equality state. And I don't think it's fair to give one entity, even if it is a state agency or constitutional entity or however you see the university, to give it special treatment under the law. Because it, it goes against what I think Wyoming stands for. Thank you. Thank you both. Um, looks like uh, Mr. Weaver, does it, do you have comments, Mr. Weaver? Certainly, certainly, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. I'm going to be very quick. I know patients might be wearing a little, a little thin, and I respect that. So we thank you for the time uh, that you've given us. Please introduce yourself to start and then take the floor and run. Certainly, Mr. Chairman. My name is Paul Weaver. I'm a member of the city council and uh, currently serving as mayor. The mayor is picked out of the city council. It's a council of management form of government. And like I said, I'll be fast, and we do appreciate your patience and your time. Um, over the course of the consideration of this bill, I've, I've tried to listen very carefully to all the discussion and particularly uh, debate in the other chamber. And uh, just coming from another side of this discussion for all of you, one thing that's become very clear is there appears to, to be some part of the atmosphere that wonders why the city of Laramie doesn't just shut up and sit down, especially about water. And the reason for that isn't complicated. Our citizens in Laramie are pretty engaged on a host of issues and none more so than, than on how the water for the city is used and developed. And we hear about it all the time on every issue uh, involving that water development. A close second might be the water rates that they pay. And sometimes those two groups or different groups of citizens that are engaged on those topics. But I'm concerned that they're both gonna end up furious about this bill if it passes. Maybe not, but I'm concerned about it. And that's why I'm here. You know, I don't have the feeling that I can just go away. I feel like I have a responsibility uh, to these, shit, to these uh, citizens and, and frankly, our relationship with UW. We want residents in the university to have a good relationship and we don't want anything to impact that. We try to you know, maintain a, a healthy respect for, for our people in Laramie and that's as it should be. And I, I hope all the legislators uh, have a good chance to hear from them about this bill and their thoughts on it uh, in the future. I, I can tell you that on behalf of the entire city council of Laramie, uh, when I say to you, Mr. Chairman of the committee, we support the university. I went there. I support them. We have a good relationship with them on most things. Sometimes we, we hit a bump in the road. And I've heard that, uh, you know, there's a little bit of, again, a lack of patience because it seems like this conversation has gone on a long time. Why haven't we been able to work it out? Well, what I'd like to share with you from my perspective uh, and on behalf of the council is that the problem here, the essential problem here emerges when uh, we hit this wall where there needs to be a 100% cost-free water arrangement for Jacoby and recreational field irrigation, and the city simply can't meet that demand out of fairness and equity to all of our other ratepayers. And you've heard better detail about that from people smarter than me. Uh, the golf course is a welcome amenity for Laramie, as are the other athletic fields and the other things that, that may be watered by, by this uh, uh, potential new well, but it, it doesn't justify 100% subsidy from Laramie water bills, which we're afraid are gonna come one way or the other. Um, we, we, we have a, a concern about that and that's why you're hearing from us uh, so regularly about this. I spoke with my predecessor in the, uh, in the mayor's position earlier today about the history of this. And yes, it's, it's true, we've had many discussions, uh, but the conversation never changes. It seems that the city is being characterized as being too inflexible and therefore this bill is required. I'd like you to just consider for a moment, based on, on everything that you've heard, that our feeling is the university has been somewhat rigid in their position and has determined a need for the state to intervene on their behalf. We remain ready, willing, and able to find a solution that is fair for the university and the city. We certainly don't think this bill is that solution. And I think we can find a way to have 
low or perhaps no cost water in the long run if we can figure something out. But there's been a lot of discussions that don't seem to have been conducted with reaching that goal. I think there's been some discussions where it's simply been free water is the answer, no costs associated with it, and that's what we need. Otherwise, go pound sand. And the, the city council and the city government simply cannot go along with that out of, out of uh, our duty to our constituents. I, I appreciate there are different views. I doubt there are any questions, Mr. Chairman, but if there are, I'm certainly here. Uh, if, if there are any. Questions for Mr. Weaver. Good job of getting your concerns, thank you. Uh, more testimony, I guess we'll, we'll go to the crowd out here again. I'm just gonna ask, come on up. Welcome. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. For the record, David Fraser, Executive Director, Wyoming Association of Municipalities. And I'd start by saying I'm not uh, as oblivious to the mood of the committee as I, my appearance here might indicate. Um, I do appreciate your time. And I know that this is a frustrating situation that uh, certainly a discussion that started before my tenure did. And I, I recognize that. Um, so I don't know the, all the ins and outs of this. I'm not a water law expert, uh, but as I listen to this, um, you know, I hear from both sides, both in the hearing and outside the hearing, I hear from both sides that the other is being uncooperative. And I think that uh, whether, you know, whichever, whichever, uh, I think what's not in dispute is that they're not cooperating. And I, and I think that, uh, I think that if they did cooperate, I, I do believe uh, there certainly be some economies of scale that would save uh, taxpayers and ratepayers money uh, on both sides. And I do believive uh, that there's some, and some envi clear environmental issues here. I think that uh, the good of the aquifer and its, its longevity and safety would be uh, enhanced if the sides would cooperate uh, on their use of that as well. And so uh, I guess my plea, to the committee would be, um, as, it's, as it's difficult to wade through all those other issues, I guess I, my plea would be uh, to ask the parties to take a little more time and see if they can come up with a win-win solution uh, that will uh, not only protect the environment, but also uh, save the taxpayers. I, I, believe, I, believe a win I believe that solution is out there, and uh, I think the committee should encourage them to try a little harder to find it. With that, uh, Mr. Chairman, I appreciate your time and I'd be certainly happy to answer any questions. Question for Mr. Frazier. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Another cut. Thank you, Mr. Frazier. I, I'm a great idea. You know, it certainly would be ideal for the parties to work it out. In my experience in the Wyoming legislature, if an issue comes from Teton County or the University of Wyoming, we just legislate the solution. Uh, however, uh, it sounds like this issue has been going on for quite some time, and that's curious to me because we've had different presidents and different people in the administration, both within the city and the university. So why the continued gridlock with the rotation of leadership? Do you have a sense for that? Mr. Frazier. Thank you for, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Senator, again, you know, my tenure here has been relatively short. This certainly pre-exists. Uh, uh, my tenure in my current position, and I don't, I don't have an answer for that. I certainly, I don't have an answer for that. Thank you for the question, I I Mr. Frazier. Thank you. I, I've got a little bit of one. It's part of my history. I probably spent 50 to 75 hours with the previous mayor of Laramie on this issue. That's a, a little bit of where my jaded side comes. Is it seems it ought to be a lot easier, and this is a difficult issue. Thank you. Uh, further testimony in the audience? Yeah, I'll give you another bite at the, I'm gonna let her give one more bite at the apple. I'm sorry, I may, I may I'm out of line. So, okay. And I wanted to talk about it, but I thought Corey would do a better job talking. Um, 
I have been having this conversation with the university as best I could recollect. I actually made a list this morning in my notes back to President Sternberg, which in Laramie at Old Main feels like ancient history. And yet, if we really think about it, it was only five years ago. I've had this conversation with President Sternberg, interim President McGinnity, um, uh, who was after that? Lori Nichols, um, interim President Theobald, and now just briefly, barely, uh, President Seidel, of course, he, he's barely conversant in the issue. Um, the correspondence that we've archived on our website goes back to 2015. I invite you all to see it. Um, I think the revolving door that we've seen, frankly, in the president's office has been part of the reason we find ourselves here five years in, almost six years in. And I think time could be very well uh, to the benefit of the city's ratepayers and of the state's rate pay taxpayers to allow us to find a solution. Um, that's my feeling. I've been a consistent person throughout all of it. And I think that the, the leadership changes have been a problem and have brought us here. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I think we'll, we'll go ahead and go online. I think we've got a list of people and if they're, they're not directly connected, we'll probably do a couple minutes piece and ask them not to repeat themselves a whole lot. Uh, can we start letting people in? I'm not sure how many we have. I've got a list with two pages long. Senator Case. Mr. Chairman, while people are getting lined up, why, why aren't we um, maybe looking at having water for the common areas of the university also be served by wells? Is that something that's on the table? I mean, all the irrigation, are we using treated water for that? And why would we do that? Why would we pay for treated water when we could have wells in the university for the, the grounds? That's a question I have for somebody to answer. Mr. Crank, do you Mr. want to Chairman, go ahead and testify Senator, while we're waiting? Um, we have. Please identify yourself. My name is Pat Crank, and I'm here on behalf of the University of Wyoming Board of Trustees and the University of Wyoming. Um, we have four wells that have been mentioned in the Chugwater Formation that, that are used. At, three of those wells are currently working and are used to do some irrigation on the main campus. We also buy about half a million dollars of water from the city to irrigate the main campus. And so we'll, we plan to continue to use those chug water wells to irrigate the main campus. We may supplement it with the new wells once this ordinance is cleared away and we can get the infrastructure built down there. But that's potable water that we're purchasing. You know, it, with the exception of the chug water well, and that water we're purchasing potable water from the from the city of Laramie to irrigate the main campus as well as Jacoby. I was just buying time for more people to end. Yeah. Would you like to testify some more? We're, we don't have people in yet still. Uh, I'll go ahead. So I'm gonna be really succinct. I, I think there's some critical dates here. So um, the city's information about the 41T3 well is just horribly misleading and very disingenuous. The 41T3 is not a well, it's a piece of pipe sticking out of the ground. It was originally permitted in 1942. In 1977, at the request of the city of Laramie, the permit was canceled. It has never produced water. The, it was drilled crooked, they had problems drilling it. As far as I can tell from all my research, it has never produced a drop of water. It is on, land owned by the University of Wyoming. The city of Laramie came along and they filed a permit, which I think is void on its face and defective, to allegedly drill a monitor well where the 41T3 piece of pipe exists. So when, when the city tells you that we drilled a well 70 feet from their well, that's false. It is not a well, it's a piece of pipe sticking out of the ground. They applied for a permit at that location, not having our permission or authority, and I think that permit is void. And the priority date, Senator Scott, you asked, is in 2016 when they applied for that permit. You understand water law probably far beyond me, but your, your priority date is the date you apply for the permit. And so the, that priority is 2016. Our priority date on the two UWLs that we've now completed that are very productive is 20. 
19. So they actually have a priority date over us if they're allowed to drill that well. Um, because they cannot drill it where the 41T3 sits because it's our land and they have no permission to do so. They've now tried to move it and they're trying to, they have plans from what we can tell to drill that well in a city street in the Gray Gable subdivision near Jacoby. Um, we do not believe they'll be able to successfully complete that well at that location. We don't, they don't even own the land at the intersection of 45th and Crow. Uh, Senator Scott and Senator Driscoll, you understand interference probably far better than I do, but you cannot bring an interference claim unless your well fully penetrates the aquifer that's in the same, that's, you know, where the same well is. They have no well that they own that fully penetrates the Casper aquifer. So that's, that has caused their panicked and, and frantic actions to try to drill the 4-1-T-3 well some distance from the pipe sticking out of the ground in a city street. Until they have a well that fully penetrates the Casper aquifer, they could not under Wyoming state water law bring an interference claim. So the whole interference thing is really irrelevant as, as you pointed out, and we will never know until you know, if in fact at some stage they have a well that fully penetrates the Casper aquifer, they could, and it has a priority date that's earlier than ours, they could possibly bring an interference claim. But as you've noted, the state engineer is well suited to do that. And with regard to these wells, some of the history that you've all remember and talk about, the Wyoming Water Development Commission in 2018 did an extensive study. They funded a level two study on the water in this area in the Casper aquifer. The state engineer has, um, in response to the city's premature interference claims, has studied that finding by the Water, well, Water Development Commission, an extensive study, and said, you don't have an interference claim. And by the way, it doesn't look like, us, like you will ever have an interference claim based on this study funded by the Wyoming Water Development Commission by highly qualified hydrologists. The other thing that's important to note is the timing of this. We applied for our permits in 2019, got them, drilled the wells. By the summer of 2020, it was becoming pretty apparent that despite the extensive objections of the city of Laramie, that the state engineer was gonna issue us our final well permits, giving us authority to put a pump down the hole and start applying the water for beneficial use. So in, on August 4th, 2020, knowing and believing that the state engineer was about to issue a permit, the city passes this ordinance. I, give, I gave you a copy this morning, um, you know, before I had to break for a while, but you have that ordinance in front of you. That ordinance prohibits the importation of any water into the city of Laramie. It prohibits private property owners from drilling wells. It makes private property owners who own existing wells, depending on the production, whether it's over 25 gallons per minute or less, to meter that well and provide that information to the city of Laramie. You know, um, we just heard from a, a water lawyer that says, boy, if you ask the city of Laramie, they're gonna give you these permits. That's not in the stat, that's not in the ordinance. Read the ordinance. It prohibits the importation of water. We have spent several hundred thousand dollars drilling two very productive wells and we cannot, according to the city ordinance, which is unconstitutional and illegal, bring that water onto our property and um, apply beneficial use so that we can get an adjudication from ultimately from the state engineer and the border control for the water that we've drilled and found. These wells were limited by the state engineer's office at, the, at a maximum of production of 540 acre feet per year. These wells can produce far in excess of that. The state engineer placed that limitation on us because of the North Platte settlement, which Senator Scott's probably familiar with, and what's called the Platte River Implementation Plan, which is a part of that settlement, which requires the state of Wyoming to send enough water down the North Platte mm. to support endangered species. So the state engineer studied this extensively and said, you can only produce 540 acre feet from these wells. That was based on a calculation of what we had historically used. 
we were granted the amount to produce out of these two, new, two wells, what we have historically produced out of the Chugwater wells and what we bought from the city. If our wells are limited at a maximum of 540 acre feet per year, there is no net loss to the water system in Laramie or the Laramie municipal system. All we got with these wells is you can produce in a more efficient manner out of these wells, what you have historically used for irrigation. We still, after these wells will hook to the campus, will pay the, the city of Laramie over roughly $1.5 million for the potable water that we purchase. And the irrigation water that we will use on the main campus to supplement the chug water wells until we possibly hook these wells to that main campus part. Um, Senator Scott, you've asked a very important question. Can, should we look at broader legislation to prohibit municipalities from exercising jurisdiction that they do not have? And the answer is yes. I mean, I just represent the University of Wyoming. We have wells that are ready to be put, to be connected to the campus so we can establish our beneficial use. So we deliberately asked Senator or Representative Nicholas to draw a narrow bill. Um, but that is a problem statewide. No city or municipality has the ability to tell a private property owner what they can do um, on their land, except in limited police power kind of situations. But with regard to water, the state engineer is key. Senator Nethercott, I will tell you that there are a lot of ordinances out there that say, and this is entirely proper, if you have a well, you cannot connect that well to our municipal water system. That is smart because that, that private well could um, contaminate the municipal water system. A state or a city or municipality or county has no authority to interfere with the substantial authority granted by the state engineer and say you cannot import water into our city limits. You can't drill a well. I mean, the, the framers of our constitution granted that to the state engineer. They're very good and they do a great job. And there's a whole series of statutes that regulate that and control that. Um, and with that, I will stand for any questions. Senator Nethercott, I sense you want to talk. Mr. Chairman, everyone, these are brilliant legal arguments. And I do feel like an arbiter in the courts. Uh, <laughs> and that's a problem. Is there litigation pending? Sounds like it. Mr. Chairman, Senator Nethercott, this bill is gonna rise or fall. If this bill passes, this bill, the whole purpose of this bill is to nullify an illegal and unconstitutional ordinance, <laughs> all right? If it does, if it does, then we will go forward and connect our wells to the UW campus. If it doesn't, I will tell you that my clients will continue to take steps and spend the money to build the infrastructure to connect these wells to the campus. When we cross, one of these wells was, is, it, is within city limits. One of the wells is outside city limits. But even if we were to connect the well within city limits to Jacoby and begin to irrigate, we violate the ordinance. It's a criminal violation to violate this ordinance. So if this bill fails, Senator Nethercott, we will go ahead and, and there will be a, a large lawsuit, I suspect. The city of Laramie will sue us and we will duke it out in court for a couple of years and we'll get an answer. And ultimately, I believe that answer will be that a city in the state of Wyoming has no authority or jurisdiction to interfere in decisions controlled by the state engineer or the University of Wyoming Board of Trustees. Follow up, Senator Nethercott. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. It does, and probably because both sides are being postured by lawyers, uh, that they need the money. They, every, everyone, everyone needs, <laughs> we do, it's a crisis. Uh, you know, essentially what's being offered is we need to make a determination that the city of Laramie's ordinance is unconstitutional. And here's all the legal arguments as to why. Uh, and why the law doesn't work. And so we need to fix that by making more laws. And the history in this case is really troubling. And this is for everyone involved. I mean, it sounds like power grabs have occurred for years. Everyone getting more creative and better than until we reach this point, we're gonna 
buy the land. We're going to drill our own one. We're going to put a water permit in. We're going to start drilling a 1954 well. I mean, it's really remarkable efforts um, that are amazing. And now we're here in the legislature with a bill drafted in the Senate committee. Disappointing to the university, disappointing to the city of Laramie. You know, I hereby declare this is a corporations committee. It's really, really, really unfortunate that it's come to this place. I think the bill will pass, even though we shouldn't be here. Uh, so I just would like to express my grave disappointment about, again, another opportunity to litigate in the legislature uh, for the resolution. Teton County does it all the time. So. Thank you, Judge Nethercott, oh, Senator Scott. Mr. Mr. Chairman, following on that, should we recommend to the Appropriations Committee that both sides need to have their budget cut? Absolutely. <laughs> Further questions from Mr. Crank? Thank you. Do we have anybody in the waiting room? I, we, we weren't successful. I see no one appearing yet. Mr. Chairman, this is Danielle Creech with the LSO. We do have Mr. Weaver with his hand raised here online. Oh, Mr. Weaver, this is the last time I'm going to let someone go twice. We're getting into a bad trend here. I will let you go and we're done after that. Mr. Chairman, I uh, appreciate that. Paul Weaver, City of Laramie, currently serving as mayor. I, I wouldn't have raised my hand at all, except uh, I thought I might be able to provide an answer, Mr. Chairman, uh, to the committee and Senator uh, Nether Cott's question. One thing that's been very unfortunate and that I think has contributed to the issue has been the fact that there's been so much turnover in these leadership positions. Um, that's not uncommon for the for the mayor's seat at the city of Laramie, simply because we the mayor simply is the presiding officer of the city council. You're not elected as mayor in Laramie under that council management system. So there tends to be some frequent turnover in that seat, but uh, there's also been um, an unusual amount of turnover in the leadership uh, at the University of Wyoming completely unrelated. And I too share that uh, we think this is a regrettable turn of events. And I, I regret that I wasn't able to work with the with the chairman of the committee in, in the previous years about, about this issue. But just by way of providing an answer and sharing in the regret. And thank you, Mr. Chairman. I really appreciate the opportunity to speak again. Thank you. Uh, do we have anybody in the waiting room? Because I sense we're near the end here. Mr. Chairman, I do not see anyone in the waiting room with their hand raised. Seeing none, do we have anyone else in the room that'd like to testify? Public testimony is closed. Committee. Bill has been moved. Discussion. Mr. Chairman, Senator Case. I come about this, uh, you probably remember, I'm, I'm a utility economist and uh, I see the issues from, you know, a customer that has alternatives and uh, the the monopoly provider doesn't want to allow the customer to explore those alternatives. There's no doubt there are places they could meet in the middle. Um, you know, it's it costs too much to provide treated water to, to irrigate, and it's not long term to think about it. But, uh, Mr. Chairman, you know, if it were electric utility, for example, you, the University of Wyoming provi provides its own electricity. Um, they don't buy it in many municipalities, there would be a municipal utility. We'd have the same issue there. There is room to grow together, but clearly in Wyoming, you can have a well. And if it doesn't interfere with anybody else's well, you can use that well. And you can avoid the extra cost. People do it all over. Um, I'm, I'm just persuaded that maybe there's some... Um, you're not supposed to really use your water system to fund your town. Your charges are supposed to be reflective of the cost. It sounds to me like these charges are overloaded and, and uh, it sure sounds that way, Mr. Chairman. And so uh, uh, the idea of charging utility for general revenue and subsidizing the rest of the city operations, that's pretty repugnant too. So I would, I would just, I wanna support this bill. Senator Scott. Mr. Chairman, frankly, I feel that this bill is a disgrace to both sides, uh, that it, it does make me wonder about the level of funding that we're giving both sides. Um, I think probably the bill's a good, I've 
I'm going to support it out of committee. It's probably a good bill, but the fact that it's here at all is a disgrace. Thanks, Senator Scott. Is there another cut? Last words. I'm going to join in a little with that. It's, I think it's incredibly tough. It's too bad that we have to be this way. We've seen it other times. I spent a lot of time on this. I'm telling you, I live a long ways away from Laramie, and I spent a lot of hours with the past mayor, spent a bunch of time with a bunch of people, and I can't get a good understanding from either side to this day exactly what the problem is. It's, it's just unfathomable to me. But that being said, I am a water person. And when you go back and look at state history, it's clear that the state wanted their water developed. It is their water and they wanted it developed and they wanted it used. And anytime we've got someone that impedes developing new water sources in Wyoming and the use of them when they don't impinge on someone else, I think is really sad. If, if these wells had been here prior to the North Platte Compact, we'd probably have bigger, bigger gallonages on them. Uh, that being said, I'm going to support the bill. Uh, we're going to get it out, and or at least I'm going to try to help get it out. And we're going to go on with this. Uh, I hope this doesn't affect all of you and your relations going forward, because I really, really do think it's, it's so sad that this is no different than two ranches next to each other. You don't have a choice of getting divorced, moving apart, folks. You're going to live together. And I, I hope we don't see you back with another bill because this does remind me a lot of the county up in the in the north that we deal with all the time. Thank you. Uh, any further comments? Yeah, Mr. Mr. Chairman, I just want to anticipate the next move. And I anticipate the city of Laramie will approach the legislature about a different kind of law and circle about it in a different way. You've got to solve the underlying issue. That's all I can say. I mean, I, it's clear that it's hostile for years. Uh, Senator Boner left a proxy of an I vote. Senator Case. Aye. Senator Nethercott. Senator Scott Aye. and Chairman Driscoll. Aye. Uh, Mr. Chairman, House Bill 198 passes with four ayes and one no. Committee, uh, I'm gonna ask real quick, I hate to done Representative Gray again and, and his crew. I think we're all tired and a little stressed and I, I would like to go ahead and adjourn absent objection without doing another bill. Probably a good idea for Representative Gray. He should take it. Let's, like, let's all get it fresh. I, yeah, I, I actually do worry what it's going to do to your bill. We're probably not in the best humor. You'll be Tuesday. You'll be first up. Promise you. I'm not doing this to kill your bill. I'm on it, by the way. <laughs> so, unless there's objection, I'm going to go ahead and adjourn us. That's a good idea. All right. Thank you. All right.